Hello everybody and welcome to another Attack on Titan review. And this one is going to be much more fun to get into than my last one because you all were not wrong. While season two is certainly a slump, season three kicks it up to a gear Attack on Titan previously has not reached. In fact, it achieves the rare status of actually being better than its original season, something that not many TV shows do. But season three to me is the best Attack on Titan we've seen so far, and it makes season two all the more baffling to me. Yes, despite all the people commenting or sending me messages or somehow using my business email because they think that's an appropriate way to try to get my attention, telling me that Attack on Titan is objectively a masterpiece and all negative criticism is ridiculous, which that's some weeb if I've ever seen it. Season two sucked compared to season one and three, and I'm really excited to talk about season three and just how much better it accomplished its storytelling, pacing, execution, and momentum. But let's go ahead and break down what exactly season three is. For those of you who don't know, it's essentially kind of split into two parts. In fact, when I got about halfway through the season, it felt very conclusive, and I was wondering what was happening. Turns out this season, unbeknownst to me, was released in two halves, and that's why it kind of feels so complete, and then kicks off once again. So I essentially have a season three and four here, but not really. So the first half of season three really focuses on the human conflict that's been set up in season one and kind of explored in season two a little bit as well. And here we see a lot of these factions and division kind of come to their zenith. And yes, there's of course some Titan stuff going on, but really I enjoy that this is the military and soldiers working out the truth with politicians. It's very interesting, engaging. Levi's back, thank God. Why would you make such a cool character? Okay, we're gonna talk about Levi a lot today, but let's move on from now. We'll wait for that for spoilers. And actually seeing the politics and the scheming here played out so smartly was just an enjoyable level of storytelling. It's actually rare to see uh, the political sides of a lot of action-based show pay off and be some of the most interesting stuff of the season. And it really was, which is just so encouraging for me at this point, going in and waiting for the next season, which I actually, apparently, I don't have to wait as long as most Attack on Titan fans have waited for season four, so... Sorry, you guys have been waiting a long time, that sucks. But even in this first half of the season, which isn't quite as action heavy as the second half, we have total investment as the viewers because it's all handled and plotted out so carefully. You know where everyone stands, you know why they stand, and while the mysteries are still there, the storytelling is clear and concise. It's a really great balance, and the writers in the writer's room seem to have really upped their game from what they tried to do last season, and I appreciate it. Attack on Titan for me really thrives when we have the most interesting characters, which by the way is still not everything. Aaron, don't like him, he's annoying, but it's when we have these characters actually moving against each other and not just standing in trees for episodes healing. It's also very thoroughly established in the first half of the season that our heroes are willing to go to some really dark places to achieve their goals. I personally am kind of tired of like the, oh, I won't do this for my cause from heroes because I find it to be like just an annoying cop out to like overly heroify people, but no. Our good guys torture, they do some sketchy stuff to achieve their ends because this is an extreme circumstance. And it honestly wouldn't be believable in my opinion to have our heroes be like, no, we can't descend to their level by doing this in a situation where if they don't accomplish what they're trying to accomplish, all of humanity could die, 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 or half of it, or some percentage of humanity could die. And that is spectacular. I like that the writers didn't pull any punches there and they are willing to do what needs to be done to get done what they're trying to do. See what I'm saying? And sprinkle on top of that an undeniable improvement of the overall animation quality, which made the action that does occur in this first half more interesting and yes, even better than season one, which is surprising. Season one's action was just probably the best I've ever seen in animation, but they've improved from a clearly bigger budget. And it's dynamic, it breathes more, and is much more fluid than what anything we've seen before in Attack on Titan has presented yet, and that's gonna pay off all the heavier for the second half of this season. Now, all that being said, I do have a couple still just eh for season threes. All the like more information we get about the Titans at the beginning of this season, I just kind of roll my eyes at, though that is fixed in the second half. I just don't like the introduction of like certain things that are going on with Titans. Once again, we'll trade into spoilers. We'll get into that. But it's just, uh, for the first half here, I definitely was less interested in the Titans, more interested in all the human things and what conflicts were growing and how they were brewing there. And then the conclusion of this first half was awesome. I really wasn't sure how they were going to land it, and this kind of 
I can't say anything really ending was so satisfying and really kind of had me get some of those fist pump moments that I just greatly enjoyed. And honestly, even some of the more just like, oh, okay, we're expanding this with the Titan stuff. I don't, heh, huh, was just completely overshadowed by the uh, realization of the scouts and how much you become invested in them as a group. And don't worry if you're only watching Attack on Titan to watch some giant flesh babies nom on people. Season three, second half has that in spades. So the first half is more human focused there are some things with Titans, of course, going on, but it's a lot more about what is happening with these characters within the walls. Now, moving on to the second half of season two, there's kind of the biggest offensive moment we have here. And my only criticism is like, how many people can die before, like, how many people were there exactly? There's just like a little bit of like, so many people died. How many exactly here? <laughs> I think the story structure was a lot more well thought out uh, than the previous season. The momentum really carried me through to all the people commenting like after Dana watches season three, he's gonna love season two. No, not at all. Still was annoyed by a lot of things there though I didn't like hate it as some people took my review. I just thought it was a drastic step down in quality. Four out of 10 isn't awful, it's below average. If I wanted to say I hated it, I'd give it like a one or a two, but no, it was just, boring and struggling to get through. But for season three overall, I'm feeling a solid 8.5. It was aggressively interesting. It had such a well paced out story and I found the conclusions to the first and second half to be satisfying. And I do wanna talk about the exploration of the Titan mythology, but I have to do that within the spoilers. So we're gonna move on into that now. So if you have not seen Attack on Titan season three, you're gonna to need to click off the video right now, unless you just don't care and you'd like to hear my thoughts, even if you haven't seen it, in which case stick around. Hi, I love you. Thank you for not screwing me over in the YouTube watch time because that's like the biggest factor that determines the success of a video. It's also why you see a lot of reviewers split their reviews into two different videos and then stretch them both out to be 10 minutes, which is kind of like, you know, filler. And they'll do a lot of like bad comedy <laughs> to try and fill out that 10 minute watch time so they can still make more money off the video. That's just a YouTube insight. But let's continue on for spoiler thoughts for season three. This is the first time I think in any show I've ever watched where I've supported a military takeover of the government. Well, I think I did in Battlestar Galactica as well. But aside from that, this is pretty much one of the only instances where the military takes over the government and overthrows the existing leadership. And I was like, good, f those guys, get them out of here, they're terrible. And the really intelligent decision to have this like fake attack and prove these people are willing to just sacrifice half of humanity was, engaging, kind of funny, and made me fall in love with like all the people we're rooting for drastically more so. So like, yay guns, I guess? <laughs> the Historia plotline, I was a little bit iffy on at times. I wasn't entirely sure how they were going to progress that. And I do think the moment of her like successfully doing some badass stuff, landing in front of the people and being like, I'm your new ruler, was a little bit over the top and groan worthy. I would be lying if I didn't also kind of just be like, God damn it, yeah, you are inside too. So eh, it's a little much but it fits and you still love it. Seriously, I respect the writers here so much for being able to pull off something that isn't heavily relying on Titans and is more just the internal human conflict happening within the walls. Of course, there's Titan stuff going on here, but it's not this big out the top grandiose battles and it's just as engaging as even the most action heavy storylines within season one. And of course the action here within this first half was still great. I actually really liked the human on human fight between Levi and an enemy of his, maybe more than anything else, one, it's Levi and I don't know, is it weird how much I say I love him? Because I love him a lot. But that also just very clearly demonstrated the better animation style that was going to happen for these fights. So it got me excited for every upcoming fight as well. And speaking of action, let's go ahead and talk about the second half of season three because we couldn't really talk about that without getting into spoilers. And now we need to get into spoilers and let's talk about what happens. As soon as they were saying, this is going to be the offensive, we're sending out all these guys and we're gonna try and take this back you know there's gonna be a lot of death. I would have enjoyed it a bit more if they had more clearly communicated how many soldiers exactly they have, what percentage were dead at times. Like I would have enjoyed a little bit more communication there. Maybe that's because I'm a big book nerd and a lot of books do focus on giving you those details so you can keep up exactly. That being said though, I still loved all the action happening here. Uh, how these people are adapting to try and take down these abnormal Titans is insane. And you'd think because of how specifically much I hate when people just win fights they shouldn't. And I even made a tier list video recently that was like, hey, like you don't don't go too far outside the lines. I just always believed 
Levi could win the things he was winning. And even the moments where I was like, oh, he might die here. It'll be a badass way to go out though, so I'm not mad. And he came out on top. I still was just like, not mad. Happy he won. He earned it. And it's a really good example of what I was talking about, where if you have someone who is just a human going against much more powerful people, you need to take the time to prove they can shoot up those couple level power spots believably. And Levi has done that with his character development. It's actually a absolutely awesome example I'm probably going to point to in the future of how to show how a regular person, not that Levi's regular, he's more of a dream, but it's how that regular individual could then shoot higher and take down something that is theoretically out of their reach. And once again, all the action here, how well paced it was, how quickly things moved along, how well it all came together and didn't rely on just like, ah, here's a new thing to get you there. Just makes me look back at season two and be more like, hey, what the f**k, where was this quality of writing before? The three biggest standout moments for me for season three were the overthrowing of the government in the first half. I just really like the way that played out and it's zenith at the end there, how well things came together. That was magnificent. You can't really change much there because of how well it just played into the show, its themes and what it's been building towards. Uh, on top of that, I'm just gonna have to pick one action sequence and I guess I'll just go with the big battle that takes up most of the second half and how well that was done. I know it's a bit of a cop out. If I had to narrow it down, I'll just say Levi's victories at the very end, and also seeing Erwin just get kicked across the entire battlefield was, I don't know, it was a moment of humor that actually really landed with me. I was like, oh, he's doing the thing where like a toddler grabs onto its parent's leg, and there he goes. Bam. And Erwin finally being able to rest was another moment uh, I really enjoyed. So let's talk about the mythology around these titans though because in the first half i was kind of like ah okay you're adding all these abilities but then we have just a couple episodes that pull away and explore how all this came to be the lies that have been told and then we just kind of get a much clearer view of the situation and where we've landed and this actually directly relates to how season three comes to a direct conclusion i actually really liked all of that. It's basically like there was a painting in front of me and someone started doing the basic outline strokes and I didn't really like what they were going, but once their full piece came together, then I fully appreciated it. And season three did a really nice job of just giving out bits of information and then finally having all those ties uh, blend to the point where you kind of see the grand masterpiece. And once that was unveiled, it's really undeniable that this show has been building to that quite nicely. It's definitely worth watching and getting to if you just watch a recap of season two and of actually sitting through that. <laughs> and I guess if I had to say like the weakest part of season three would maybe be just how exposition-y some of the information was, but I get that's kind of just something that comes with the medium of anime and is common trope with it. So I'm not even that mad. I'm definitely getting more used to it. So yeah, Attack on Titan season three was a complete joy to watch. My only complaints come down to how some information was delivered, but once it all came together, I just kind of was like, this is impressive enough that I just appreciate it. And Eren still really grates me as a character. But aside from that, pretty much exactly what I wanted from this show, and I'm really impressed to see it step back up from the slog that was season two. But you know, that's just my thoughts. Let me know what you think of Attack on Titan in the comments down below. I mean, you can tell how much more I enjoyed this from season two by how much quicker I got through season three. Season two, I was able to do like an episode a day, and I was like, I'm so not wanting to get through this. Season three, I think I was averaging like five to 10 a day, so I got through it real real fast anyway like and subscribe if you have not already hit the patreon if you want to support what i do here and be a real cool guy and have a good one y'all peace